Hello there, my fungal friends, and welcome to another overview of one of the major greenskin clans. Since I haven't done an orc video in almost two weeks now, I have decided it was time to tackle another one of these clans. And, at the request of several subscribers, this clan is going to be the Blood Axes. We're gonna talk a bit about who they are, why they are unique, as well as some of their notable leaders and distinct appearance. I am your host, the Grim Dark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn a couple of things about them, shall we? The Blood Axes are an orc tribe or clan that has actually been known to work alongside the forces of the Imperium of Man on occasion. The Blood Axes are held by other orc clans to be a bunch of untrustworthy gits. They openly trade with the worlds of the Imperium, parley with the foe, and will even consider retreating from battle if faced with insurmountable odds. Perhaps once intended to make the Blood Axes natural leaders, these qualities have instead earned them a reputation among other greenskins as little more than treacherous dogs. In fact, most of the Blood Axe's reputation is undeserved. True, they have made the most contact with the forces of the Imperium, occasionally fighting as mercenaries and making extensive use of Imperial war material. But even an orc can see the funny side of extorting weapons from human planets, only to use them again against their former owners. This clan used to be very powerful and easily dominated orc society for a long time. When they began having too many friendly dealings with other aliens, especially with humans, it was too much for the other clans to bear. A lot of Blood Axe boys were wiped out in a nasty inter-orc war known as the Big Party. As a result, the clan was overthrown and the surviving Blood Axes fled into hiding. Nowadays, they continue to deal with mankind out of necessity, since the clan has become dependent on subsidies of teeth paid to them by the Imperium. The source of these payments comes from Imperial prospectors, sent out to find old battlefields and rip the teeth out of orc corpses. Other clans are especially disgusted by this, not because the Blood Axes accept such teeth, but because they encourage humans to take what the orcs consider their property. Orcs from the Blood Axes clan have the most frequent interaction with the Imperium, and through their long and mostly acrimonious acquaintance with the humans, they have developed skills and abilities that cause other clans to look at them askance. Considered untrustworthy by their fellow orcs due to their peculiar ways, these orcs put a greater emphasis on cunning and tactics than the typical brute force approach favored by other greenskins. Blood axes often trade instead of steel, parley instead of bellow, sneak instead of charging headlong into the withering fire of their enemy, and even retreat instead of dying in a heap with nothing to show for it. Some have even taken to the stars as freebooters, where they split their time between piracy, raiding, and honest trade. They are every bit as dangerous in battle as their less sophisticated cousins, perhaps even more so thanks to their high level of innate cunning, which allows them to think around problems. In combat, they use battlefield tactics closer to those of a professional army, as opposed to the more usual orc tide of unrestrained and thoughtless violence. They even use moderately organized squads instead of the traditional mobs, and employ basic tactics like unfilating fire, feints, staggered advances, and even the occasional clever ruse. The war bosses who rise up from the Blood Axe's ranks tend to have a greater grasp of the big picture than those from other clans and some of the most well-planned and well-executed wars in Imperial history have had a Blood Axe at their head. The Blood Axes are roundly mocked by members of other clans, that view them as cowardly wretches, especially the Goths clan. The Blood Axes care little for this derision, however, and are secure in the knowledge that they alone know how to make war on the humans the proper way 
and understandably smug in their clan's legacy of leadership and destruction. Blood axes take these insults in a stride, either having a good laugh and walking off, or having a good laugh, knock all the offender's teeth out of their head, and walking off that much richer. Warriors and formations that the blood axes are actually quite famous for are predominated by Storm Boys and the Commandos. Both of those are actually things I made separate videos for, so do feel free to check them out. Blood axes use stealth to reach their enemies, denying them the chance to fire and gutting them before they know the battle has even begun. Unlike most orcs, blood axes actively work to avoid being shot, while running screaming across the battlefield. As such, blood axes frequently ambush their enemies, using dense terrain such as jungle, ruins, or other enclosed areas to close to melee combat before the enemy can react. Blood axes also employ decoy units from time to time, drawing the enemy force out of position to expose vulnerabilities that they can exploit. If badly outnumbered, blood axes sometimes retreat, regrouping and striking back if the opportunity presents itself. Blood axes prefer to fight their enemies in hand-to-hand -hand combat, and prefer to get there alive to do so. They often opt for a silent approach, scattering back into cover if they meet exceptionally impressive resistance. Blood axes prefer muted colors for their clothing and war gear, with black and green being predominant, along with many patterns and colors of camouflage, both self-made and looted from enemy forces. While they alone among the orc clans use camouflage, the blood axes do not understand why it works, only that it does. This means that a group of boys might have a dizzying array of camouflage patterns among them, typically none of which are appropriate for the environment in which they are fighting. It matters little, however, because no matter what kind of camouflage they wear, and no matter what branches, bits of moss, scraps of metal and the like, that they strip, pin, nail or glue to themselves, the camouflage will keep them hidden as long as the orcs think it does. Blood axes have also adopted the use of personal adornments commonly worn by the soldiers of the Imperium. These militaristic icons have no meaning for the blood axes, who have adopted them purely as warlike decorations. When actual Imperial medals and badges are acquired, they are deeply revered, and thought to contain potent magic for the owner. The Blood Axes banner features crossed axes with bloody blades in a dark green circle on a black banner. Along with the axe sigil, their banners often feature other icons, extolling their cunning and sneakiness. A couple of famous leaders from this clan include Badfrag the Tank Boss The warboss Badfrag led many of Warlord Gruk Face Ripper's armored and shooty wagons of the Red War, lots of them taken from the Humes, but made even more killy. Badfrag knows his Mark VIII Chimera from his Mark VI, and takes any excuse to lecture his fellow Blood Axes on the subject. He loves nothing more than showing off his collection of looted wagons in battle by leveling a storm of crude but effective firepower at the foe. Often the first things to hit the ground when Grok invades a planet, Badfrag's looted wagons would rumble forward, smashing anything in their path in a rising tide of rusty metal and flame-belching barrels. On Phanos 9, ramming through the Imperial defenses, Badfrag sent many scores of enemy tanks tumbling off the bridge, and into the boiling seas hundreds of meters below. In the aftermath of the battle, Badfrag used mobs of grots tethered to cables, to fish out the wrecks so he could press them into service again. He favored using grots for every job he wouldn't do himself, which was to say, almost everything outside of combat. Arch Scarlord Gratzdaka Vur Mechdaka is an orc warboss of the Blood Axis clan. In the 4th century of M41, he has led the orcs of Wa Gratzdaka 
in an invasion of the Imperium's industrial world of Kalidar IV. He was able to inflict heavy casualties on the Imperial Guard forces sent to defend the world, including capturing Hive Meridon and looting the Shadow Sword super heavy tank Lux Imperator. He was noted for being very cunning for an orc, and for his habit of dressing himself in the manner of an Imperial Guard commander. He was allied with the powerful weird boy Green Eye, who was, arguably, the real threat from the orcs on Kalidar IV. In 397 of M41, he was killed by the Space Marines of the Black Templars chapter, and his WA disintegrated. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Blood Axis clan of the orcs for today. Is this clan among your favorites from the Greenskins? Why do you like them? Let me know in the comments below. Was this video enjoyable or informative for you? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all a very orky day. The Emperor Protects.